Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritt, Minister of Housing and Urban Development, representing the Honorable Prime Minister this morning. Honorable Roland Roy, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy. Honorable Greta Roberts, Minister of Culture, Youth, Sports and Community Development. Honorable Julian Defoe, Minister in State in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, with special responsibilities for fisheries. Honorable Yakia Joseph, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, with specific responsibility for the development of community agro-enterprises. Other honorable members of cabinet and parliamentary secretaries, permanent secretaries, Mr. Fyle Lander, President, National Youth, Council of Dominica, Pastor Samuel Augustine, Mr. Brian O'Brien, Mr. O'Brien Blanford, Mr. Cameron Corbett, Ms. Tasha Peltier, young farmers, school students, students of the Dominica State College, members of the media, members of staff of the Ministry of Agriculture, represented by the Chief Fisheries Officer and the Director of Agriculture, all those who are listening wide and far in the media, let me Thank you for coming here this morning for the special um, ceremony which is ready to promote and advance our intentions on supporting young persons in agriculture. With this, I would like to invite um, the media to give us a welcome remarks through Mr. Malcolm Wallace, who is the first um, President of the National Association of Youth in Agriculture, who is unable to be with us this morning, but he will be with us in present through a voice message that he's sending on his way to Jamaica. Mr. Malcolm Wallace, as first president of NIA, is now the operations, um, technical operations officer at the Caribbean Development Bank. Um, Mr. Wallace. Blessing good morning to all the government officials of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and most importantly, the youth, those currently involved in the agriculture sector, and those with aspirations to do so. I greet you as the former president of the National Association of Youth in Agriculture, NIA, and the Caribbean Agriculture Forum for Youth Africa. I am pleased that the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica, specifically the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, has taken a bold step to conceptualize a national program to integrate young people in agriculture development. This initiative includes, among other things, the reactivation of NIA as the umbrella body for youth in agriculture and the creation of the Friends of Youth in Agriculture Association FIRE, which will provide direction, support, and mentorship to youth in agriculture organizations. It is fitting that this initiative is being spearheaded by two founding members of NIA, in the person of the Honorable Roland Roy and Permanent Secretary Reginald Seven, who are now strategically placed to provide policy leadership and oversight to the sector. In good wisdom, the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica has prioritized youth in agriculture as a critical pillar for sector modernization, advancement, and sustainable development. This is in keeping with the call by the Honorable Prime Minister in consecutive budgets for youth to take full advantage of the economic opportunities presented by the government's vision and investment in agriculture. Undoubtedly, this approach will strengthen the access to quality training and livelihood opportunities for sustainability and improved quality of life for young people. As reported by CDB's study on the state of agriculture in Caribbean 2019, the challenges confronting the agriculture sector include low productivity, weak market linkages, climate change and natural hazards, and the glaring positive of youth actively engaged in the sector. This initiative will address the latter by galvanizing and deploying resources to support youth entrepreneurship in all segments of the agriculture chain. It should be echoed loudly that this task requires a sustained effort to be afloat. It should encompass appropriate and enabling policies, institutional structures, capacity building, 
and financing for cultivating sustainable youth agribusiness enterprises. The concept note prepared by the Ministry presented a clear results focus initiative which prioritizes empowering youth to contribute effectively to the development of the agriculture sector in Dominica. Let's transform this into a reality to improve the productive base, increase foreign exchange earnings, enhance food and nutrition security, and build a sustainable and climate resilient sector driven by the youth. Circling back to Naya, I would like to highlight that the association's vibrant history has contributed to developing several young farmers and young agriculture professionals within the sector in Dominica, the region, and Philadelphia. Naya is also responsible for designing regional programs such as Hoops, which are still active today in other OECS countries such as, such as St. Lucia. I would like to recognize the contributions of Delroy Williams, Mara Abraham, Amina Mason, and Derek Theophil, among others, who serve as exemplary young persons in Naya's executive during its formative and active years. I would also like to highlight the contribution of ECA's delegation in Dominica, specifically Mr. Kevin Stevenson, and regional experts in the field, such as Ms. Yunamei Gordon and Dr. Alison Chesney, for the support provided to Naya and the regional forum CAFE. Finally, I commend the government and the Commonwealth of Dominica for this important initiative. I would like to state that I remain committed to support the program and the overall development of the agricultural sector in Dominica. As we see in Naya, agriculture needs you. I thank you. Thank you. Following Mr. Wallace's um, departure as the president of Naya, we had Mr. Delroy Williams taking up the floor. I would like to invite Mr. Williams, who is the last official president of Naya, to give us an address on the history and background of the organization and our participation in youth in agriculture. Mr. Williams. Pleasant good morning. The San Formosi Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritt, Minister for Housing and Urban Development. Honorable Roland Roy, the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries and the Blue and Green Economy. Honorable Greta Roberts, Minister for Culture, Youth, Sports and Co Community Development. Honorable Lakia Joseph, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy. Honorable Julian Defoe. Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and the Blue and Green Economy. Dear Cabinet colleagues, the, Mr. Firelander, the President of the National Youth Council of Dominica. Mr. Reginald Severe, the Permanent Secretary and also a former member of um, NIA, as Mr. Wallace said in the previous, in the previous presentation. To students, youth, well-wishers, other technicians within the Ministry of Agriculture, and everybody else within the sound of my voice. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I think I was invited here this morning to drive home one message, and one message only. Agriculture needs youth, plain and simple. That is the motto, and that is the mantra that we should all internalize as individuals, as organizations, and as a developing nation. Agriculture needs youth, and Dominica needs agriculture and youth. It was true in 2003 when we launched NIO at the Public Service Training Center, and it's also true today, almost 20 years to the day. So permit me please to reiterate and to re-emphasize, agriculture needs youth. NIO's genesis stems from a regional movement initiated by the CARICOM heads of governments through the Alliance on Agriculture and the Rural Milieu. This alliance is a mechanism which facilitates dialogue, consensus building, and commitment on policies and programs on agriculture throughout the Caribbean region. The, the alliance re recognized early on that the aging majority of participants and farmers in, involved in agriculture, coupled with the lack of youth involvement in the sector, meant that our sustainable development was threatened. So, Youth involvement and engagement 
was seen as a key pillar towards the social development and the economic development of the Caribbean region. But youth involvement and engagement are hindered by numerous challenges. Lack of financial opportunities and lack of financial support from financial institutions. Lack of avail available lands to foster youth engagement. Lack of relevant training, lack of support from experienced stakeholders, as well as negative stigma associated with agriculture are among a few of the challenges. The Inter-American Institute for Cooperation and Agriculture was charged by the Alliance to develop a response to these challenges. And as such, AICA or ICA gathered 14 young persons from across the region to Barbados in June of, 20, in June of 2002. The main fruit from that meeting was the creation of the Caribbean Agricultural Forum for Youth, or as we term it, CAFI. The various participants then returned to their respective countries to initiate and develop national chapters of this forum. The countries represented, represented included St. Lucia, Trinidad, Guyana, Antigua and Barbuda, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Kitts, Jamaica, Barbados, Suriname, and last but not least, Dominica. Dominica's representative at the coffee meeting was Malcolm Wallace, who spoke earlier. He was an extension officer at the time and a farmer from the village of Pebush. Upon his return to Dominica, he quickly rounded up the troops and we met religiously at the Division of Agriculture's Agricultural Library, giving up most of our Friday afternoons to develop Naya. Naya was formally launched in 2003 and registered as an NGO in April of the 1st of 2004. Some of the very members are here today involved in this new charge to get young persons involved in the sector. This dedication to this mandate must be applauded. Permit me to point out that our current minister, the Honorable Roy, is a founding member of NIA. The permanent secretary, Mr. Original Severe, is a long-standing member. The acting chief fisheries officer, Mr. Derek Friofield, is also a founding member and the first vice president of the organization, among many others in the audience this morning. NIA's aim is to create a greater awareness among youth of the opportunities available in agriculture and to help increase their participation in the sector. And this aim allowed us to develop a diverse membership in the organization, including secondary schools, the Dominica Community High School and the Cassidy Secondary School, the Dominica State College, the National Forage Clubs, etc. NIA's individual membership range from the nooks and crannies of the island's rural communities to the city of Roseau. I am testament to this, being from Bafesit and Pong, for I found refuge and belonging in this organization. At its peak, NIA's former membership reached 118 members. As NIA grew, the organization formed an arm, Enterprise NIA, whose mandate was to assist and develop agri-entrepreneurs through various interventions. Enterprise NIA focused on attracting project funds that enable our members to, uh, to either establish new enterprises or develop their current businesses. Example includes Nelly's Planting Chips of Portsmouth, Granny's Dainties, which was a local line of local confectionery, the Use Project in Loda, among many others. Original success story, helping out our primary school, which Malcolm alluded to, Hoops, was developed in NIA, in Dominica, sorry, by NIA. It was a project that strengthened school agricultural programs, linking them directly with supermarkets, hucksters, etc., and providing technical and financial support to allow schools to grow fresh vegetables. This project was highlighted at the regional level at CAFI and subsequently implemented by several other chapters to include St. Lucia, Grenada, and St. Vincent. It is currently still a project being um, operated in St. Lucia. I think NIA was ahead of its time. And I also think the organization peaked very early, building capacity and successes within the agricultural sector. I could speak of many other initiatives that NIA developed, but that didn't see the light of day. The Agricultural Youth Desk, the Youth in Agricultural Credit Society, the MIND Project, which focuses on mindset change in agriculture, among many others. There is still much to do, and there is more that I can say about NIA's and other initiatives the Secondary School Elocution Contest, the youth, the youth Voices in Agricultural Digital Newsletter, the Young Farmer Investment Network, but time doesn't permit me to, get, to delve in depth. But I, I'm sure everyone gets the picture. In ending, I would like to point out that 
that some of the very challenges that we sought to overcome still exist today. Issues of access to suitable and affordable lands, access to investment and capital, the cost of doing business and institutional capacity and stigmas of ag agriculture, etc. If I can leave this podium with one piece of advice this morning, it would be this. Focus on creating the enabling environment and making sure it addresses the overarching as well as the innate needs of young people. In those eternal words, build it and they will come. Forever yours in development and in agriculture. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Williams. At this time, I'd like to invite to the podium Mr. Firelander, who is the current president of the National Youth Council of Dominica. Mr. Lander. Thank you, PS7. The Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritts, Minister for Housing and Urban Development, representing the Honorable Prime Minister. Honorable Roland Royer, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, the Blue and Green Economy. The Honorable Greta Roberts, Minister of Culture, Youth, Sports and Community Development. Other Honorable Members of Cabinet and Parliamentary Secretaries. Honorable Lakia Joseph, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, with specific responsibility for development of community agro-enterprises. Mr. Reginald Sever, Permanent Secretary, Minister for Ministry for Agriculture, Fisheries, and the Blue and Green Economy. Other Permanent Secretaries, Pastor Samuel Augustine, Ms. Tasha Pelty, Young Farmers, other invited guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is with great honor that I stand before you today to publicly endorse the National Association of Youth in Agriculture launch on behalf of the National Youth Council of Dominica. We are gathered here today to recognize the potential of young people in reshaping the future of this vital sector, harnessing innovation and bringing about sustainable solutions to challenges we face in feeding a growing global population. Agriculture is one of the most important sectors for creating employment, food security, sustaining rural livelihoods, and generating foreign exchange. It is a well-known fact that the backbone of our country is its villages. Our country's rural areas depend on agriculture for their livelihood. The youth in our country must therefore need to be aware of the importance of agriculture and its various aspects. They should be encouraged to take up agriculture as a career, and if not a career, a pastime. Despite the rapid advancements in technology and urbanization of our world, agriculture remains at the core of human existence. However, the agriculture sector has often been overlooked as an area where young people may find their passion and purpose. Today, I am here to inspire you to view agriculture as an opportunity, an opportunity not only for personal development, but also for creating a lasting impact on society and the environment. According to the United Nations, the average age of farmers in developed countries is between 50 and 60. In developing countries, it is even higher. As these farmers retire, there is a risk of significant skill gap in the sector. Youth empowerment and involvement ensures a new generation of farmers fills this gap and brings fresh ideas and innovation to the industry. This situation must change if we are to achieve food security for all and cater to the nutri nutritional needs of a rising world population projected to reach 9.7 billion by 2050. Youth have never been more critical in addressing this issue. We have seen how young minds across industries have fueled disruptive innovations, technolo technological breakthroughs, and powerful social movements. In agriculture, these same fresh perspectives can revolutionize how we approach production, distri distribution, and consumption for the betterment of all. Young people possess unique strengths, creativity, resilience, adaptability, and unwavering passion, instrumental in tackling complex agricultural problems. 
with our affinity for technology, we can drive digitization and modernization within farming practices and create scalable solutions that increase efficiency and reduce waste. As we strive to engage the younger generation in agriculture, we must acknowledge the shift in perception required. Agriculture is seen as a labor-intensive occupation with limited career prospects. To come to act this solution, we should showcase agribusiness as a field teeming with opportunities for entrepreneurship and technological advancement. By doing so, we can appeal to more young minds eager to contribute to global food security. One crucial step toward empowering youth lies in our commitment to providing accessible education on agriculture. This step encompasses traditional farming methods, technological innovations like precision farming tools, and sustainable practices like hydroponic farming. Experiential learning on farms on school or school gardens, complemented by classroom training in specialized subjects such as agronomy or agricultural economics can spark interest among students and ignite their passion for agriculture. Franklin D. Roosevelt once said, we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. The importance of agriculture is undeniable. Therefore, we must empower our youth to take the lead in this initiative, taking advantage of the opportunity to contribute to their, their country's development. I find great hope in the fact that the future of agriculture lies in our youth. Today's youth are the farmers of tomorrow, the future leaders of our nation. Thank you to the Ministry of Agriculture for establishing the Youth in Agriculture program. This initiative is a crucial step towards promoting the engagement of young people in the sector, addressing the challenges facing them, and ensuring a sustainable and prosperous future for agriculture. Your efforts in investing in education and training, increasing access to finance and markets, addressing land tenure and ownership challenges, and promoting innovation and technology adoption are vital for the success of this program. I wish to commend the Ministry for its role in advancing the youth in agriculture movement. I want to also solidify my endorsement as the President of the National Youth Council of Dominica in the National Association of Youth in Agriculture. I implore all youth to take advantage of the impending opportunities and to be the change you want to see. You hold within you a power that can transform our nation. I wish to extend the support of the National Youth Council of Dominica and look forward to the future and further partnership to make this a success. Thank you. Thank you, President Landa. At this time, I would like to invite to the podium some of our youth in agriculture, which is in the Ministry of Agriculture. I'd like to invite to the podium Honorable Yakia Joseph and Honorable Julian Defoe, who themselves were young persons participating in youth in agriculture at a very young age, and they will give us an overview of the youth program with the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy. Honorable Defoe, Honorable Joseph. Good morning to everyone. The Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritt, the Minister for Housing and Urban Development, representing the Honorable Prime Minister. My Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries and Blue Economy, Honorable Roland Roy. Honorable Greta Roberts, the Minister of Culture, Youth, Sports, and Community Development, other honorable members of Cabinet and Parliamentary Secretaries, other honorable members of Cabinet and Parliamentary Secretaries, Permanent Secretaries, Mr. Fire Lander, 
the President of the National Youth Council of Dominica, Pastor Samuel Augustin, Ms. O'Brien Blanford and other young farmers, Ms. Tasha Pelty, other invited guests, members of the media, to our youth, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. We are unable to build a future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. And I realize that Mr. Lando alluded to that earlier. Recognizing that agriculture is the key to the future of Dominica, we are at a crossroad at determining how our agriculture will be fashioned and what role our youth play today and what role they will play tomorrow. Recognizing that youth must be prepared to participate in the transformation process and direct it towards becoming leaders in the development of the sector. And recognizing that youthful creativity and innovation is critical to economic development. And so, the ministry is poised to respond to the challenges that limit the capabilities of the youth in participating in our national agricultural development thrust. And I can safely say that I am a very, very proud product of the Ministry of Agriculture and the Government of Dominica being the, one of the leading young persons in agro-processing and I, I strongly believe that, that that's why I was given the responsibility for the development of community agro-enterprises and I am willing to share my expertise, my trainings and my knowledge as well as my experiences in this um, industry to ensure that we have a very thriving um, agro-processing industry and I'm sure that our expert in, in the fisheries sector will allude to that as well. Go right ahead. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, well, protocol having been established by many others and you could see the long list which I do not desire to go through again. <laughs> um, my contribution, as always, is linked towards the contribution of the fisheries sector, although, you know, I, I love all of the, of the sectors. But I need to put a little shine on it, because usually it's not in the name. And I always like to imply and, and remind us that when we hear the word agriculture, it also includes the fisheries sector, a very vibrant, high-value sector, which a lot of people is unaware of, but also is one of the, the most dangerous occupations in Dominica. And that is why often you not see so many other people here who associate themselves with that, with that area, but they love eating fish. Lobster has become very popular. And um, catch of the day is very popular on menus all over the place. But I think very few people have the experience to see what it is to bring these products to the table. And um, I, as I advise a lot of my colleagues um, in cabinet and, and other friends who like to you know, quickly come at me, oh, Julie, for how come the fish is $12 and so on? I, I told them I don't have to give you, don't go out for a day. We'll just take you on a half hour of the journey it takes to where the grounds, fishing grounds are. And I am very sure you'll ask to take you back. I'm very sure of that you'll ask to take you back. So do not complain about the product. It, 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 it is a product that has a very high capital cost to, re to retrieve it. And um, for those of you who will engage more in the fisheries sector would know that. And from some of my associates from the, the financial sector that is there would know that fisheries investment is a high, very high capital investment. And at the moment, the basic investment to engage in our small artisanal fisheries sector would cost you anywhere from seventy to $100,000. So you can very well appreciate when we, spoke, when we speak about investment in, in, in a little while, you would see that sets us on a little path above. And we, we, we will require, as you have negotiations in WT1, so you have like special and differential treatment. And I am here advocating as the minister that those of your, our young individuals who wish to engage in the fisheries sector be given special and differential treatment because the port their portfolio on a whole is just completely different than our typical, you know, um, agriculture crop, agriculture program. And, and this has what one of the things that has really affected um, a lot of the younger individuals from getting financing because sometimes when they, these portfolios are tailored in the financial institution, it does not separate and make differential treatments because their conditions and their criteria are very much. So I, um, I'm always advocating and I will, I will advocate. 
I want to say, again, the film, the launch of Naya, um, I wasn't a member of Naya, my colleague was for all our years. We grew up together in, in, in the fisheries sector, uh, in, 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 in fisheries division. And I believe at the moment they wanted a member from fisheries. So I guess he, he, he got the spot. So, but otherwise, <laughs> yeah, o otherwise, us being two, two junior officers, I would have gotten the spot, you know. But um, we, have always, we have always gone hand in hand as youth in our own personal and development, both academically and, and training otherwise. And as you can see, as I stepped out of love, he quickly filled in my gap. And, um, and, and that, that, is, that is how we have always done in, 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 in our whole career. Everywhere I go first, I make sure I create a path for him to come after me. <laughs> yeah, everywhere, everywhere. And I, I will say, he, he uh, Mr. Diophil and I, and, and we are speaking youth, and, and this is not going away from the subject area. Um, we have had the privilege to have a lot of high level trainings around the world. And, he, and I would say, maybe safely, he and I were the first two people in the entire world to participate in one of the most high level trainings in Iceland. You have to stay there for six months. Um, at that time, without a first degree. And, and, and we were given that special privilege. Afterwards, we went to master's level and so on. But we were given a special privilege as youth in fisheries in the region, recognizing our potential. So the head of the program at the, U at the UN and even in CARICOM made sure that we were given that special expectation. And I believe in both our years, we may have been the top students among all others in the world, both in my time in 2014 and in Mr. Teofield's time subsequently after me. Am I right, Derek? Yes, we were, we were, we were, the, top, we were the top students in the enti entire world. When I say the entire world, Asia, Africa, and everywhere, everywhere combined. Yes. Um, so the launch, I think the timing is, 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 is ideal. I think it's Easter. I don't think it's a launch. Is it rising again? Um, because Naya existed, it is um, a revamping of Naya. So I, I don't think, I think we should change the title, but it's too late for that. A revamping of the national youth in agriculture. And, and in fisheries, um, in 20, our first census we conducted in, 20, in 2008, uh, Derek was the lead. The average age was, of the fisher was 53 years old. And we conducted our, our second census in 2011, and it had dropped to around 47 years old. Um, since then, we, we had a third census that was on its way in 2017. We were in the middle of the census, but um, due to the hurricane, the entire files and everything were lost, so we were not able to analyze as yet. But we have the new census coming on, and I am very, very sure that we, we will drop the age margin by at least five, five years. I am I'm confident, just on our observation, on the number of new fishers we are registering and field observation. There is nothing, I mean, data is important, but Nothing is more important than what you can see with your own eyes. And we can see through our trainings, our engagement on the ground, that our cadre of fishers are, are very young. So I just wanted to state that, and they would be the most critical people we are looking for to meet our huge target of the 700 million. So the 700 million um, contribution to GDP by 2030 is, um, let me say, is not solely on the back of the people in the crop sector. We intend to make a meaningful dent the calculations have been made. It is a surmountable target. We're looking at at least 47 million increase every year to at least 370 to 400 million um, increase by um, 2030. But I am confident that with Derek and myself at the head and a lot of young people, we have seen the path towards achieving that, um, that target. And it will not solely based on the, our existing artisanal type of fishery, but value addition. Value addition of fishery products and an expansion where in, in the appropriate time our young people will be introduced to what are these areas so that we can show that we make our meaningful contribution. So this is, this is overall um, for the young people. We continue to provide endless training. This has been uh, a stalwart program of the fisheries division, training in all sectors of fisheries because, as I said, mentioned earlier, because it is the safety issues, it's a very dangerous work. So we put a lot of emphasis on occupational health and safety fishing techniques. And as you know, in modern times, hygiene, quality, and standards have become the key of the market. And um, we have been vigorously promoting that critical aspect for the domestic market only because while the emphasis is to tap into our export, we have to meet certain standards 
but we want these very same standards that are applicable to our exported products that our own local people enjoy. So we are not promoting a standard to the, our young fishers for export and a different ones for the, for the local market. We, our belief is that once they are doing what they're supposed to do and that they can meet the export market requirement, it is no problem for them to also serve um, the domestic market with that same value of products. And for the young people, it is not only the actual engagement of fishing, there are others. We have the, the fish vendors. Uh, um, for those of people who grew up looking at dung at these people, it's, it's a very lucrative, very high value occupation. Sometimes their margin, profit margin, is much higher than the fishers themselves. And maybe that is why some people complain of the price, but this, is, this price did not originate from the fisher themselves, but it may be some of our oh, very clever um, fish vendors who are putting an exorbitant you know, um, profit margin. So people say the fisherman selling the fish at $15, but probably they purchased it at six you know, from the fisher. So I just wanted to put, that, to put that out there, that even selling fish is a very good, humble job. And as you can see, the Rose of Fish is complex, is well designed for you to conduct your vending in an environment that is hygienic, that is welcoming, that is clean, so nobody sees you on the side of the road sitting down and, and so on. You're an environment and you have all the amenities afforded to you. So young people, agriculture and the fishery sector is there. Take advantage of it and we will create the additional opportunities, as I will mention later, of how we will facilitate these things. Thank you. Thank you to our fisheries expert, as we call him, in the ministry. And in this regard, we're basically here to encourage or continue to encourage the youth in agriculture. And as a youth involved in policy development, I look forward to creating an improved and enhanced environment for engaging youth and encouraging the participation in agriculture and for the transformation of the agricultural sector. And in this regard, I would like to invite Mr. O'Brien Blanford, one of our leading natural agriculturists, to give us his remarks. Thank you very much. I would like to say good morning to all of our dignitaries and ministers in their respective areas, which have all has already been established. And as we continue to move forward with our Youth in Agriculture program, I would just like to share my little story, which may not be small, as we continue <laughs> to explain what you are about to listen to. So my introduction to farming was not what you expected, because I didn't always like agriculture. What happened was, when I started to farm with my father, and realized we were doing okay, we realized that our style of farming was quickly being outdated. Now I say that is because you have Hurricane Maria in 2017, and although we realized that the conventional methods that we were practicing, they sustained us, but looking futuristically to what we wanted to develop, it was not enough. And coming from a family of nine, you have the farm which feeds you, but you have the other things that come after. You have bills to pay, you have mortgages to take care of, and all those things start discouraging you at a young age, so you start looking for answers. So the thing is, agriculture teaches you to stick it out to challenging times. So we're always looking for ways to improve, to diversify, and to find different ways to succumb, to not succumb, but not to succumb to our challenges, and to climb above and to continue to improve our farming methods and help to improve our environment as well. So our introduction to natural farming was very, very interesting. We started doing different research. We started looking to different university studies. We started looking to different practices that we could implement on our own farm as well. And that is where we started natural farming. We stumbled upon it from different areas of life and then we learned specific things like how microbes function, how to develop new ways to culture them, and how to use our own foods, how to create our own inputs, create environments for them to live in, interact with different local plants and species, and how they affect our farm atmosphere positively. 
you know, those things can get very in-depth. But the thing is, it is very, very simple. Our island in itself gives us the best start because of its natural beauty and environment. So that is something that we started to nurture and we realized that we can make it work, but then you have the challenges. What were the challenges that came up with that? Well, we had to decide to make a sacrifice. And some of us are afraid of sacrifices. <laughs> Sometimes you want a three-year gain, but you don't realize that you're going to end up having to pay a 50-year sacrifice. We decided we're going to take the three-year sacrifice for the 50-year benefit. What am I speaking about? Well, we decided to cut down on our conventional farming. And that would be a loss to us because immediately you need the income. So you have to find a different way to get it. But that was one part of it. And it's going to take some time to see the results. And I must say this may not be the case for everyone. We have different environments, different areas of the island that are still untouched. I see one of my youth and agriculture trainee, trainers are back there. And that is one of the things that I'll get to earlier, later on. But it takes some time to see results. And being one of the first people on island who would venture into this, we had to experiment with different things to see which ones worked and which ones didn't. And that is going to take some time in itself. Experiments are not just today for tomorrow. Sometimes we don't understand why we take long to develop certain policies, certain plans. But you have to have a testing ground, see which ones work, and see which ones work. But however, the benefits that we have seen in the past two years of just starting this venture. First one, our input costs have been reduced to zero. Zero. I know it sounds strange. But the thing is, all the inputs that we make come from our farm. Because we learned how to work with our environment instead of trying to work against it. So that is one part of it. And starting to get deeper and further into in the environmental aspects of it, we use very little water to farm nowadays because we have increased the water holding capacity of the soil itself. A lot of us may want a tank, but we do not realize that the thousand square feet of soil space that we have is one of the best areas to hold water for us. And you just have to create that environment. So that is another part of it as well. Interestingly, we do less work. The other day I shake my father's hand and I realized, but he didn't scratch me this time. <laughs> he didn't scratch me this time. You know, because you start realizing you do less work. It is true. Because you use the environment to work for you. You have grass, you have trees, you have your animals, you have the big ones, the small ones, and the tiny ones that you can't see are even the ones that are most important. So you have to learn how to get to using them to your advantage. Right now, we have no need for pesticides, weedicides, or fungicides. We have created an environment where the microbes take care of the plants. It's interesting, if I were to give you a short illustration, you have this skin on your hand. If I were to remove some of it, you immediately start getting sick. Remove all of it, and you're in the, your emergency room. You have exposed yourself to all the different pathogens that are entering your body. That's what conventional farmers do to their soil. Believe it or not, when you remove the grass, that's a covering that was designed and put there to take care of everything else. So when you remove that, you create a susceptibility to pests and disease, and those things create an imbalance that are going to continue to decimate your farm. But we have found ways to get that under control and getting into more international aspects. Nowadays, everybody is talking about the carbon footprint. I have to make sure I don't have carbon under my shoes when I'm walking. You know? But what it actually means is we're trying to cut down on the stuff that we use that harmful to our environment. So we have reduced that to nearly zero. And just for a short example, we only use, how do I put it, one gallon of glass to cut an acre of grass. It sounds weird. Yeah. But the thing is, 
You have to know how to do it, when to do it, and why to do it. And now that helps you to cut down your carbon footprint. And then you have a flip over. You're now a carbon sequester. What that means is you're removing carbon from the atmosphere, storing it into your soil, and that can no longer harm you and no longer harm your fellow farmers. So that's another big advantage of that as well. We have re-established habitats for our native flora and fauna by turning our farm area into a food forest. Dominica is filled with forests. We just need to find a way to turn the forest to food so that you have the same environment that you had. However, you have created a way to benefit from it. So by doing that, we have seen reintroduction of moths, wasps, different tiny species of animals that you would not have seen before. Some of them maybe have gone extinct, we don't even know. I can't remember the last time I even saw a butterfly. It, I remember I used to take the small red onion back and you tie the wire on it and just run around and you catch them. I can't do that again. But right now, starting to find ways that you get those things back. Food security is another big issue in the world right now. You have climate change on the rise, different natural disasters, you have rising water levels, rising temperatures, all those affect us, especially in the Caribbean. Small island nations are very susceptible to these things. So farming like this not only gives you an income, however, when you do get a lash like we like to say, you don't have to fall back. You stand up and you continue working because you have stuff in place that's going to keep you moving. More secure and marketable farm produce and experience, and I like to say it doesn't have to stop at the market. You don't only have to get your produce to Roseau. There are Roseaux in Martinique, in France, different areas. You have people who also, they don't want you to send the food to Roseau. They want to come to where you have the food. What that means is you set up an agro-ecotourism experience, which is in very high demand, not just regionally, but internationally. And this is a perfect fit for our island and culture. Everybody knows Dominica is the breadbasket of the Caribbean. However, we find that the youth in agriculture, however, they find it discouraging. Like I used to find it discouraging to farm, to try to find ways to make things work. However, if you run around in circles, you get nowhere, but you burn a lot of energy. So you have to find ways to move forward. So for me, this launch or relaunch of the Naya program doesn't just mean that we're going to teach the youth agriculture. We're going to teach them how to learn, how to experience, how to experiment things by doing different things trying different things. It may not make sense. However, you don't know if it makes sense unless you try. So you get out there. You gain experience from older people and you add it or a young, modernized touch and you tweak it. We had a few launches back of the digitalization program that is going to continue. We're trying to digitize agriculture and not just agriculture, tourism, health sectors, different sectors. And interestingly, all of them do stem from agriculture itself. So this is why this one, I feel, I'm not biased, I mean, but it's most important. And getting knowledge, getting knowledge is key, but you have to apply it. You know how to fix the vehicle, you let a month pass, a year pass, and the vehicle is getting older, but you know how to fix the vehicle, you know to fix it. Give it five years. It's the same thing. You have no progress without applying what you learn and trying different methods. And I would encourage our youth to nurture their talents and abilities. Experience different techniques, different technologies that can amplify and improve older knowledge. Because the thing is, a lot of the old people, a lot of the older ones, they know how to do things. They can't really explain to you why. And they would like a way to make it better. That is where you come in. As young people, as parents, as older ones, all of us have a knack for finding something that we love and thinking outside the box. Find innovative ways to do different things, to develop sustainable skill sets that are tailored to fuel your fit of interest. Your field of interest, sorry. It's not just agriculture, like we're hearing about the fisheries as well. We have the tourism sector. We 
have all those different sectors that can interlink, and that in itself will not just give us a sustainable economy. We may shoot past 700 million in no time because we have set the foundation for something that is a lot bigger than we may even think that it is. Our timing is very critical. Dominica has already set the stage for food production and world-class tourism products and services. We all know that before somebody hears about Dominica, as soon as they step foot, they want to come back. They have experiences. We have the rivers. We have the waterfalls. And it is going further from there. You have food experiences. You have cultural experiences. You have all those different things that can stem from doing agriculture the right way. So, as I would like to encourage our youth, our parents, our older people, our ministers, our dignitaries, to help the young people, help them nurture the things that they love to do. Send them out there, let them get their hands dirty, let them fill their stomachs with things that will strengthen them and encourage them to keep moving forward. And as we continue with this program, I would like to say I am here to help, to share the knowledge and the experience that we have gained throughout this ordeal, I can say it for now, but hopefully in the future it will turn out to be something very beautiful. So I'd like to thank you, and as we continue, I hope everybody has a good day. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien is the son of um, Mr. Blanford. Mr. Blanford was the recipient of the first duty-free concession for a vicar when he was a young farmer around 15 or 16 years ago. And this is the product of the activities of Naya back 15 years ago. This is the product and the results. And basically what we, what we want to demonstrate is that one at a time, if we can change the life of one person, definitely Dominica are going to see the progress that we all plan to have. So thank you very much, Mr. Blanford, for representing what youth in agriculture truly is. At this time, I'd like to invite to the podium the Honorable Greta Roberts, Minister of Culture, Youth, Sports, and Community Development, to share with us. Let me recognize the presence of Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritt, Minister for Housing and Urban Development, representing the Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable Roland Roy, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, and the Blue and Green Economy, Honorable Lakia Joseph, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, other Honorable Members of Cabinet, Mr. Reginald Severa, Permanent Secretary, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, and the Blue and Green Economy, other Permanent Secretaries and Parliamentary Secretaries, Mr. Fayel Lander, President of the National Youth Council of Dominica, Pastor Samuel Augustine, Mr. O'Brien Blanford, Mr. Cameron Cor Corbett, Ms. Tasha Peltier, Young Farmers, staff of the Ministry of Agriculture, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Mr. Blanford, if you don't mind, I would like you to stand and take a bow. I take a bow for you. Honestly, you have touched me, man. If you're not so far, I'd make you come down for me to give you a little hug and a kiss. But I'll do that after, remind me. I am so impressed, man. What a presentation. Thank you. You have made me proud as a Minister of Youth. Yes. Let me tell you what, an wonderful, what a wonderful occasion it is for me today as we gather to witness the launch of the National Youth in Agriculture Program. I am confident 
that this program signals a rejuvenation of interest in the agriculture sector, the return to the soil that we have been advocating for, and the renewed impetus for the economic and rural development of our country. I congratulate the ministers within the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, the Blue and Green Economy, led by the Honorable Roland Roy, on the implementation of this program as proposed by the Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt. Today, I have been asked to speak as the Minister of Sports, of Youth, sorry, on our youth in Dominica and the opportunities available for our youth for their further development. But I wish to inform you that no remarks on the work that this government is doing to provide our young people with a better life, better access to education, better jobs and opportunities can be brief. So I crave your indulgence for a few minutes. Just two days ago, we witnessed the graduation of over 600 Dominican youth from various skills training programs conducted by the Youth Development Division and the Adult Education Division. These young people are now equipped with competencies which have increased their employability and placed them on a progressive path to personal and professional success. The Adult Education Division, which has gained increased prominence in recent years, offers a wide range of programs catering for Dominican youth and giving them second chance learning opportunities for skill development. Many of our students have passed the CSEC courses being offered by the Adult Education Division and moved on to better paying jobs. They are serving as prison officers, bankers, cosmetologists, and tradesmen, and others have gained acceptance to colleges and nursing schools. We have had so many success stories from these programs. One student now owns his own plumbing business. Another works as a nail technician in a popular salon and facilitates a program for the division in San Sobe, while others are working in their chosen fields, hair braiding, hairdressing, masonry, carpentry, and so many others. The long-standing skills training program of the Youth Development Division continues with the renewed commitment of the officers at the division. To date, over 8,000 people have been trained in almost 100 different skill areas, as well as over 5,000 jobs have been generated among graduates of the program. One of this government's flagship programs for youth empowerment in Dominica is the Dominica Youth Business Trust, DYBT, which was launched in 2004. DYBT continues its mission to empower Dominican youth to realize their entrepreneurial potential through the provision of social, financial, and technical assistance. The program targets young people 18 to 35 years and offers a package which includes the Entrepreneurship Development Program, Small Business Assistance Facility, Loan Guarantee Fund of over $20,000, business mentorship, and the Business Plan Innovation Awards with a grant of $5,000 and $1,000. The government of Dominica has invested over $3 million in the DYBT, which for the past 19 years has been a beacon of hope for young entrepreneurs across the country, providing them with the resources and support they need to succeed in the business world. To date, more than 1,000 people have been trained in entrepreneurial skills and have created countless new ventures from small startups to large enterprises, each one contributing to the growth and development of our economy. I cite a rapidly expanding list of success stories, which include entrepreneurs such as Mr. Grayson John of Big G's Pepper Sauce, Mr. Linvo Ambo of Alzori Business Ventures, and Mr. Rudy Defoe of Liberty Car Care Services. 
In addition, through the Social Enterprise Incubator Project, the DYBT has successfully trained 19 social entrepreneurs who are now equipped with the requisite knowledge and startup capital to champion social causes in their communities. Just last week, we handed over $45,000 to social entrepreneurs in the support of their social enterprises. We are proud as a government to provide the trust with the resources and support that has helped to create a culture of innovation and risk taking it's essential for driving economic growth and creating new opportunities. Just two days ago, we saw the end of the Jin Pier Netball Championships where our youth were once again featured. Our girls played well and I congratulate them on securing the third place position. In less than a week, we are providing yet another opportunity for our young people to showcase their athletic ability at the Carifta Games in the Bahamas. And in the month of April, we will be sending close to 100 of our athletes to Venezuela to participate in the ALBA Games. We thank the Venezuelan government who has assisted us in making this possible. Ladies and gentlemen, whilst I do not wish to keep you much longer, I cannot help it but to note that our youth continue to have ex access to a host of development opportunities under this government. Hundreds have benefited from scholarship grants to universities around the world. Through its policies, this government has created an education revolution with access to higher education and lifelong learning. Many of these graduates who returned home to contribute to their country's development did benefit from the 40% student loan debt forgiveness program of this government. That's 40% wiped off from their loan payments at the aid bank and other institutions and which was reinvested into other productive areas. Since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, this government has placed close to $40 million at the aid bank for ongoing lending to MSMEs. Many youth entrepreneurs have accessed these funds to include agro-processors, plumbers, electricians, hairdressers, small retailers, and artists. Because of this intervention, youth enterprise in Dominica is on the rise. And we certainly cannot forget the National Employment Program, which provides gainful employment to so many young people across the private and public sectors, serving as a springboard for other careers, providing access to training and on-the-job experience, and let's not forget, providing a steady income. Today, this government adds yet another innovative program to its range of youth-friendly, forward-thinking initiatives. Coming from ag an agricultural belt, the Southeast and the East, I have a deep appreciation for the impact of agriculture on rural lives and economy. In these communities, agriculture has always been the lifeblood of our local economies. I am therefore in full support of any venture, any government initiative that targets our young people and encourages them to get involved in the sector. The prominent elder farmers in these communities and across Dominica have done their share and have been major contributors to our country's economy. But they need a new crop of young farmers with the passion, the fresh ideas, the technical skills, people like Mr. Blandford, of course, and boundless energy to continue their legacy. I look forward 
to the success of this program. The National Youth in Agriculture program is the ideal launch pad for the renewal, the reset of our agriculture sector. Like all of you here, I too am very excited about the growth prospects of our food and agriculture sector, driven by our youth and their participation. May God bless our efforts, and may God bless you all. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable. At this time, I'd like to invite to the podium, first introducing him as one of the founding members of the National Association of Youth in Agriculture, an experienced 12 year experience extension officer, and now our Honorable Roland Roy, the Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue, and Green Economy. Thank you, PS. I think I'm sitting on the wrong side of the table. I should be on the other side as a young farmer myself. Um, but I'm playing my official role today. <laughs> Let me recognize the Minister for Housing and Urban Development, Honorable Melissa Skerritt, who is representing the Prime Minister, Honorable Gre Greta Roberts, Minister for Culture, Youth and Sports, my colleague Minister, Honorable Defoe, and Lakia Joseph, other cabinet colleagues, PSEs, ministry officials, and importantly, young farmers. Good morning. It gives me great pleasure to join you this morning on this very important occasion, the relaunch of NAYA. As a founding member of NAYA, I'm very happy to be part of this process. And it gives me the confidence that the future of agriculture is in safe hands, especially in from Mr. Blanford. Since assuming my role as the Minister of Agriculture, we made it our business to meet the farmers across the island to get a better appreciation of the challenges so that we can better design programs to increase production and productivity, and productivity on the farm. We have met many young farmers, some of you are here today, as we travel through the island. And we identify that you are fronted with the same challenges that many older farmers and fishers are faced. We recognize the issues of the suitability of land, the unavailability of reliable and quality farm labor, access to working capital, to invest in agriculture, etc. But these issues have been addressed through direct government intervention by making financial resources available at the aid bank at very low interest rates, and of course, commissioning studies that will advise on the access of land and the issues of farm labor in Dominica. We also pay close attention to farm access and we have invested over the past two years over $20 million in farm access and will invest a similar amount in the next two budget cycles. We also recognize the issues surrounding timely payment to you as farmers and the access to consistent markets and reliable markets, I must say. In the last budget address, the Honorable Prime Minister announced that $5 million will be made available to Dexia so that farmers can be paid within 24 to 46 hours. And also, he mentioned that investment would have been made for the expansion of regional markets by investing in refrigerated containers and the development of buy Dominica depots in strategic islands in the Caribbean. So today, I'm happy to announce that the financing of these initiatives and other interventions such as support to livestock farmers, 
support to the modernization of the cropping system, restoration and development of fish landing sites, and support to agro-enterprises. That funding will be made available for a special facility under the ongoing Agricultural Livelihoods Program by next week. You, as young farmers, will stand to benefit from these programs and many other initiatives which we are currently undertaking at the Ministry and those we are currently designing. But you must be organized and structured, which is one of the main reasons why we are here today. By now, you should be fully aware of the government's target for agriculture to contribute 700 million by the, to GDP by the year 2030. This cannot be achieved only by the technicians at the ministry. So this is where your efforts, your passion, and investment in the sector must stand up. The average age of a family in Dominica is about 65 years, unfortunately. So you are the ones who will be calling on to meet the target. You are the ones who will be calling on to introduce innovation to the sector. You are the ones who will be calling on to invest in smart and resilient agriculture. You are the ones that will be calling on to expand on the production of the major export crops. Also, you are the ones that will be calling on to invest in livestock and dairy and in the dairy industry so we can reduce our high meat and milk input bills. <coughs> it's expected, sorry, <coughs> it's expected that you will take lead in investing in modern agriculture techniques such as hydroponics, aquaculture, and mariculture. And it is also expected that you will promote farm certification to enhance the market competitiveness of Dominica's fresh produce in the region and also in the international markets. I can say confidently that opportunities for taking farming as a career is endless. This is not only due to government policy, <clears throat> but I strongly believe that the construction of the international airport is a game changer. The airport will open doors for new markets overseas and will bring an increase in demand for fresh fruits and vegetables and cut flowers as well. So I'm urging you young farmers, start putting systems in place to take advantage of this opportunity. Lastly, since we brought up the idea of the relaunch of Naya in January, we have discussed this initiative with the OECS Commission, the Caribbean Development Bank, in an effort to governor support for the program for the various initiatives that they may have. Also, Dominica being the chair of the Agriculture OECS Council of Ministers, I had the privilege to decide on the agenda for the COBE meeting in June. And of course, youth in agriculture was placed on the agenda. That is the level of focus the ministry will place on you, the young farmers. So in closing, I would really like to thank the Prime Minister for his tremendous support he has provided to us at the ministry and his endorsement of the program. I also want to recognize the effort of the staff of the Ministry of Agriculture and our partners, particularly ICA, for initiating and supporting Naya since 2003. To you, my young farmers, I want to pledge the ministry's support as we continue to invest in agriculture, and we can only promise that you will not be left alone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Minister. As we continue with our program, 
would like to invite to the podium the Honorable Melissa Popon Skerritt, who is a farmer enthusiast herself. I never fail in any moment to remind me that we have to do some urban farming in Roseau and the other urban areas in Dominica. Honorable Skerritt, welcome to the podium. Let me recognize the presence of my fellow colleagues, Honorable Roland Roy, Honorable Julian Defoe, Honorable Greta Roberts, Honorable Lakia, Joseph, other ministers and permanent secretaries, Pastor Samuel Augustine. Good morning. Today I have the distinct pleasure of representing the Prime Minister, who is also an avid farmer and I know that he would have been very impressed and very proud to hear so passionately the report from the young farmer, Mr. Blanford. But I give you my assurance that I will give a thorough report on you when I see him later today. <laughs> and I also want to say to you, Mr. Blanford, that I know that you have mastered the conventional farming methods. But if, we, if you ever want to explore hydroponics and vertical farming, your parent will not like me saying this, but Rose always waiting for you. <laughs> I am honored to join all of you at this ceremony to launch the National Youth in Agriculture program, which has the potential to transform our national economy and to position our youth as major contributors to the agriculture sector. This program builds on our commitment as a government to provide the enabling environment for our youth to thrive. The policies of this Dominica Labor Party administration have always aimed to address the socioeconomic problems impacting our young citizens and to secure their progress and their development. We have been consistent with our efforts to position youth not merely as the leaders of tomorrow, but as active partners in our development today. The National Youth in Agriculture program, it sets the stage for a much needed rebirth in the food and the agriculture sector. It is a reset that will be led by, the, by our young people of this country in support of more sustained economic growth and national development. Since the passage of Hurricane Maria and the succeeding COVID-19 pandemic, we have been preoccupied with the issue of our national and regional food security, how we can grow more food, transform our local food systems, and build a stronger, more resilient local economy. The shocks that we have experienced in recent years have exposed the vulnerabilities of our food systems and highlighted the pressing need to unlock the potential of agricultural sectors. Climate change impacts we have seen can disrupt food availability, reduce access to food, and affect our food quality. And so this is why to respond to emerging global challenges, we have increased investment in agriculture to bolster production for local consumption and increase the market share for Dominican produce regionally and internationally. In the past few years, we would have heard the Prime Minister advocate for renewed focus on the production of high value crops to increase exports and to multiply the sector's contribution to GDP from the current 284 million EC in 2022 to 700 million yearly by 2030. And so we are convinced that to achieve this goal, we must empower a new cadre of young farmers who can bring a level of expertise to the cultivation marketing and the sale of select crops, as well as the willingness to employ cutting edge methods and technology to boost production. We encourage 
young farmers to consider diversification into the non-traditional high value fruits and vegetables such as cantaloupes, strawberries, blueberries, bell peppers, broccoli, cauliflower, and many others. These fetch top dollar at local supermarkets and hotels and is still a mostly untapped market. To get them on their way, the government offers startup assistance in the form of inputs, greenhouses, planting material, and technical support. We have taken into consideration the economic constraints facing many of our aspiring farmers which restrict their participation in the sector. These include lack of access to credits and arable land, as well as the technical capacity. And in a direct response in fiscal year 2022 to 2023, government earmarked one million in support to young people with the drive and passion to set up their first farms or to, mod or to modernize and expand their current farm facilities. Today, with the launch of this program, we begin to operationalize this facility. This represents a new platform for job creation. More youth will be able to generate gainful employment for themselves, feed their communities, and earn a dignified living for their families. And this is what this government has always been about. We have always engaged with youth and formulated policy to help them to achieve their hopes and their dreams. We have made the right decisions for our young population in education through the National Employment Program, the Dominica Youth Business Trust, the countless other initiatives, and now through the National Youth in Agriculture Program. With this venture, we will leverage the talents and the skills of our young to establish model agricultural enterprises with the financial and the technical support of the Ministry of Agriculture. The Ministry has developed a workable approach which involves a national directory of young farmers, fishers, agro-processors, a facility with the provision to counterpart financing, grant funding, or credit for budding agri-enterprises, the establishment of youth in the agriculture desk, and the reactivation of the National Association of Youth in Agriculture. These approaches have all met with the approval of the cabinet in the hope that youth can drive national efforts to reduce imports and increase exports of Dominican produce, and to offer innovative strategies and solutions for the strengthening of the sector towards sustainable development. To meet our object objectives, we are open to the inclusion of young farmers in program design, as well as the development of national policy and strategy. And we hope that this program will help to remove the stigma associated with agriculture, that it is for the poor country rural folks. Those of you with experience in farming know that it is an honorable profession that feeds, educates, and has the potential to enrich families. Farm work also influences a strong, enduring work ethic, which we must now pass on to succeeding generations. We must also know that agriculture can be a means to earn substantial income if approached with diligence, patience, and a willingness to get out of our comfort zones and to get our hands dirty. We want our young people to see agriculture as a lifestyle and a business that requires focus and hard work to realize returns. And I speak to the young professionals who are here and listening, who do not want to get their nails dirty. Uh, this is why, or those who lack farmlands, this is why that we have adopted modern day farming techniques in Rosa Central. We lack the farmland, as you know, in most cities. Um, so we're employing vertical farming, hydroponics, rooftop farming, and we are still part of this agricultural push. And so there is a place for any and everybody in agriculture. Um, you can simply buy 
hydroponic systems on Amazon for as low as $46 US to as high as $240 or even higher if you want to go. You can farm on your porch. Um, so these are the other ways that we can explore. $46, this is much less than we would spend on our jazz and Creole outfit, right? Yes? <laughs> so I urge those who, even our elderly too, who um, still want to farm, but are looking for easier ways of doing this. Hydroponics is the way. Um, it does not require soil. It requires water and nutrients. But you can simply Google it. It comes with a kit. It's very easy and simple. It's a do-it-yourself way of farming. You can plant your lettuce and your seasonings right on your porch. It is quite exciting, I would say. That's what got me interested in agriculture, actually. <laughs> An added benefit is that the increased youth participation in agriculture will change the face of the industry and solve the problem of our aging farm population. And so we need more young people involved to sustain the sector and to take on the responsibility for promoting food security, improving livelihoods, generating income, and hastening economic diversification and growth. Young people, you will always have the power to make a difference in your world. We offer you the means to take ownership of the resources available to you and to maximize the opportunities provided by government in this essential growth sector. And so I am excited about the possibilities of the National Youth in Agriculture program. I commend the officials of the ministry for their leadership and look forward to the positive outcome of this important national initiative. May God bless you and may God bless Dominica. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Popon Skerritt. At this time, we come to the end of our formal presentations in our program, and we're going into what you call the official program launch. Um, to do so, we will invite the Honorable Julian Defo and our Honorable Yakia Joseph to provide us with a um, summary of the various components of the program. Welcome, Honorables. All right, good morning again, and give me permission to not go through our protocol list once again. Permission granted, right. right. So um, at this point, um, Honorable Defo and I will give you a breakdown of the arrangement for the protocol, the program implementation. I will give you a breakdown of the program and public relations activities, as well as launching the official program for 2023 and beyond. So, Mr. Defoe. Okay, good day. So, as um, Honorable Joseph has said, this is where we demonstrate what is it that we really intend and how we intend to um, contribute and, and, and lend our full support be an initiative and not let Naya stand alone on its own. I think Honorable Roy has already alluded to the funding mechanisms, but we will, I will start off with what would be the, the government's um, contribution or main program of support. W um, to begin with, there are uh, four main areas that the, the government is going to, to, to programize to make this um, um, gesture that we have just spoke about all of this morning a reality and not just an organization and, and a talk. But it is not an exhaustive list because as from time to time, you know, as resources come in and, and as we garner new resources from partners, um, these programs and, um, and support um, will grow. So first we have, we would begin with a, a national repository um, if I didn't pronounce the word right, right, sorry, because there are some words that are just difficult for some people. Um, um, that is for both agriculture and, and, and fisheries. Um, already there are existing systems, but we have to, to fine-tune them to really pull out the, the youth 
um, out of it. So there is an agriculture database already existing and fisheries division, I'm not boasting, but always had a tremendous record of its stakeholders in the fisheries sector, which is automated. Um, but we will place emphasis on, on, on pulling out um, those who are within that, that youth category and, and to streamline and, and to know them better. So we have an official registration and providing of young farmers, fishers, agro-processors, and other agro-entrepreneurs in Dominica to include their online presence of their enterprise information, agricultural activities. Those are, um, include photos, videos, presentation, and other documents, operating locations, products and services, contact information, and statistical information on their achievements and contribution to employment and economic development. Another key sec area where we will focus on is an enterprise development module for agriculture entrepreneurs. This will entail the development of the Agriculture Enterprise Development Training Program, the AEDP, to be funded by the ministry and executed on behalf, and executed on behalf of the ministry through the partnership on, or collaborative agreement with the DYBT. The fourth point being the national curriculum for agriculture education. Of course, our education must play an critical role. So the commission, the review, redesigning, development, <coughs> and delivery of a national curriculum for agriculture education, and support for the setup of school farms and school feeding programs with our primary school in collaboration with the Ministry of Education. And then the third most critical part is all of what we're saying that they have to be the funding mechanism. And the funding mechanism is what will drive all of the key initiatives. So we will have an agriculture initiative financing, which we call it short EIF. And this will provide the provisioning of counterpart financing grant in some instances, but some people will require more than counterpart. Or credit within a package of technical support to develop and or establish model youth agriculture enterprises in the areas of sustainable agriculture production, and Mr. Blancford is already a leader in this area, modern technologies, climate smart agriculture, alternative inputs, biotechnology, value chain addition, export trade, communications, digital tools and applications, and agricultural services for existing and new agricultural initiatives. So this in part is right now providing four key areas where the government will provide direct support. As I said, this is not an exhaustive. More will come as time goes on. Thank you, Mr. Defoe. And in relation to promotion and public relations activities, we will engage in an Innovation in Agriculture Challenge, IAC, and this will set the criteria for and the value of award to initiate an annual competition that selects the top innovative and creative agricultural investments in fishing, farming, agro-processing, or agricultural services undertaken by the youth and awards a grant to the winner in each of the three categories, junior age 15 to 17, adolescents 18 to 24, and young adults 24 to 35. The annual award for youth in agriculture to recognize, highlight, profile, promote and award youth achievements in agricultural production, marketing, education, business, and services. The motto and logo national competition is extended to schools, youth groups, and young individuals to design a logo and create a motto or tagline to represent and identify the ministry's youth in agriculture program and will be used in all communications, promotional, and public relations activities for youth involvement in agriculture. The Symposium for Youth in Agriculture, which will be held in August of 2023, to initiate preparatory work to organize a national symposium on youth involvement in the agricultural sector, where they engage in these five activities. Discuss the challenges and opportunities for increased participation and contribution to the transformation of agriculture through spe specifically the increased use of modern technologies and digital tools, to highlight youth accomplishments and achievements in agricultural development and transformation, advocate the engagement of the civil society, international organizations, and government agencies on providing support, promotion, promoting youth participation, 
and enhancing the environment for improving youth contribution and involvement in agriculture. Propose solutions to challenge, challenges and the plans and recommendations for advancing, promoting and developing the agricultural sector. And lastly, to serve and contribute to the development of government's programs for encouraging youth involvement in agriculture and the development of the next generation of farmers, fishers and agribusiness entrepreneurs in Dominica and to plan for the next year's symposium. And finally, the arrangement for the program implementation, and as Mr. Defoe said, it will not all be talk. Um, we will establish a youth in agriculture desk, and it's the opening of an official office at the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, and the Blue and Green Economy under the administration and policy formula formulation and implementation department to coordinate all activities under the Youth in Agriculture program designed to provide technical, administrative, and financial support for young persons involved in agriculture to encourage youth participation and to provide youth with the achievements that they, they, um, they get in agriculture. We'll also have the formation of the Friends of Youth in Agriculture Association called FIRE, and it's an association of agriculture professionals, farmers, fishers, and agro-processors in both private and public sectors above the age of 35 to be initially appointed by cabinet to provide direction, support, and mentorship to youth in agriculture organizations, particularly the National Association of Youth in Agriculture. They will also monitor, guide, and evaluate the agricultural program for youth on behalf of the ministry. And lastly, they will review and prepare product project proposals for financing the youth in agriculture programs in collaboration with the government, regional and international organization. There will also be the reactivation of the National Association of Youth in Agriculture, NIA, as an umbrella body of existing or newly formed 4-H and young farmers groups and other youth agricultural clubs and organizations, particularly among the primary, secondary and tertiary schools. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Are you excited? And are you with us? And so, these are our plans for the youth in, in the agricultural sector and the mechanisms that the ministry shall employ to develop on the program of support for increasing youth participation and investment in agriculture, fishing, and agribusiness. And so, on this day, March 31st, 2023 and beyond, I proudly declare the National Youth in Agriculture Program launched. Thank you. I wasn't designed to have the last word, you know, but I always um, do my own thing. Um, on, Honorable Joseph mentioned um, in the categories of, of the age categories of the youth. And um, just for those of us who are 36 years old, um, you know, that the program will cater to, to, to cast. I just didn't want people to have a doubt that, that those of us who are 36 um, will not be able to benefit. So I just wanted to say that. Okay? All right. Thank you very much. So today we have um, started the journey as the Honorable Minister gave us a target that by the end of March, we should start programming and doing activities to ensure we encourage the youth. And you know we have the youth presence with us right here today. We, we feel encouraged by your presence and we look forward to cooperating with you. As you see, we have a very ambitious program to engage all young persons in agriculture. And we're starting from the, um, what do you call it? The maternity ward. From the time you start getting out, we want to start engaging you in agriculture. The following um, vicars, owners, Shane Kano, Dale and Ellen Joseph, your vicar is obstructing traffic and the police officers will just like you to facilitate if you are in here. I want to take the opportunity, before I call on Mr. Cameron Corbett, a young farmer, to give us a vote of thanks, to recognize in our presence the following individuals. Mr. Kevin Stevenson, project manager in the Ministry of Agriculture, who was head of 
ICA at the time when the whole initiative of youth in agriculture across the CARICOM Islands was initiated. Mr. Delroy Williams is the immediate past and current president of the National Association of Youth in Agriculture. <laughs> Senator Philip Roll, the DYBT um, coordinator and also member of parliament. <laughs> Ms. Mara Ibrahim, one of the long serving standing members and founding members of NIA, who is now the officer in charge of the Dominica Bureau of Standards. Ms. Batilia Bethel, who is the Agricultural Officer in the Loans Department of the Aid Bank. <laughs> Mr. Dorian Etienne, who is working officer in charge here at the Caribbean Agricultural Research and Development Institute, CADI. <laughs> Absent with us today is Mr. Ken Scopel, but very much part and parcel of the process of developing our program and the current technical specialist at AICA. Mr. Derek Fiofield, Acting Chief Fisheries Officer. Mr. Fire Lander, National Coordinate National President of the National Youth Council. Mr. O'Brien Blanford, our, our young farmer practicing sustainable agriculture. <laughs> Mr. Mathias Alexander, who is the Dominica State at the Dominica State College, also one of the members of NIA. We have Mr. Bert at the National Coordinator of 4-H. Yeah. Bert Paul. Mr. Paul, present with us here today, coordinator of 4-H um, clubs with the Ministry of Education. We have absent with us Mr. Cliff Saint-Jean from Dexia, who is also part of our programming. And of course, the Director of Agriculture, Ricky Brumant. Now I have called these names and recognized them. They are the group of individuals who is working with the Honorable Minister as our lead and our host lead, Ms. Yakia Joseph, accompanied with Mr. Julian Defoe, and we meet together and I'm um, just setting the agenda for our first meeting next week early. So I'm just giving you early notice for us to come to start doing the things that we have promised the youth. All right? So we have started meetings. We have had two meetings so far. And we have planned this event. Now we have come to the end of the event. I am extending that invitation. Also, too, you have the Head of Extension Services, Mr. Kian Stevenson, and all the technical officers in the Ministry of Agriculture will form part of the body who will be pursuing, pushing, promoting, and ensuring that the National Program for Youth in Agriculture continues to thrive in Dominica. We are streamlining it. It is not a program that will be on its own. It will be enshrined, enshrined, institutionalized, and integrated right through everything we do in the Ministry of Agriculture. And there won't be a distinction between the older farmer and the youngest farmer. Everybody will be treated. The oldest fisher, the youngest fisher, the oldest entrepreneur, everybody will be treated with equal fervor and equal attention in the Ministry of Agriculture because we have an a very ambitious goal where we're going to make the sector contribute at least a quarter of our national GDP by 2030. But we can't wait until 2030 to start working, so the work begins now. I also want to recognize in our midst the Honorable Oscar George. I'm special mention to him because Mr. George was um, the president of the Young Farmers Group out in Penville with over 50 something members and he has present one of his, I saw one of his members, Mr. Um, Roy is um, still there in the crowd as an avid young farmer. But Mr. George was a very avid um, coordinator of, um, and president of one of our most vibrant Young Farmers Group 
and hopefully as a minister in the Ministry of Youth, he will continue to advocate and to assist us in, form, in the formulation of a number of young farmers group, for age groups, school groups, and all different groups to help to ensure that the advocacy, the discussion, and the support for young persons to get involved in agriculture is not just an event on the March 31st, but it is a way of life for each one of us that is here and every one of us in Dominica listening here and abroad. So with, with this, I would like to invite Mr. Cameron Corbett to share with us a uh, thank you. Thank you. A pleasant good morning to all. I'm quite humbled to offer the privilege to to present the vote of thanks on the launching of such an integral agricultural program. Today signals an important milestone in the, in the agricultural sector in Dominica, as the launching of this program is instrumental in building a solid foundation for the Dominican youth. This is of special importance, especially to the youth who are involved in various activities in agriculture, including livestock production, fishing, agro-processing, and other related supporting services. We are excited to witness the unveiling of the National Youth in, program, Youth in Agriculture Program. Let me first begin by thanking God for blessing us with life and a lovely day. To the Honorable Melissa popon Minister for Housing and Urban Development, we say thank you for letting us know that the government has our back on this gym. And to the many young speakers of Naya, we say thank you. Your innovation is truly an inspiration to us. We look forward to great things in the future. To the Honorable Roland Ray, Minister of, for Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, your colleagues, Honorable Julian Defoe, Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture and the Honorable Lakia Joseph. Parliamentary Secretary tasked with the special responsibility for the development of community agro-enterprise. Thank you for collectively demonstrating such an effective leadership skills in the sec sector in, short, in short, a short space of time. Your numerous farms visit across the country were well visited, were well received. As a young team, you have shown through your actions, your commitment to the development of the agricultural sector. Our footprints will forever be itched on this path as we continue to work together for the further development of our country. Honorable Lakia Joseph, you're distinguishing yourself as an exceptional youth leader, advocate, and a catalyst for change. Thank you. To the Honorable Greta Roberts, Minister for Culture, Youth and Community Development, thank you. Your valuable remarks that reiterated our common intention and interest. To the other ministers and senators, parliamentary representatives and staff of various ministries, we express gratitude for your presence here today. It signifies your support to the in the development of our youth in agriculture. We look forward to this continued integration and collaboration. Thank you. Thank you to the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Reginald Saver, for leading the administrative charge for the successful media launch of this program. Your, your team did an exceptional job in presenting to us as young persons in agriculture. A new dimension to quality. Hats off to you and your team. We say thank you. Thank you to Pastor Augustine for offering prayers of blessings and inviting the God to lead as we launch forward on this noble quest in agriculture. Ms. Tasha Peltier, thank you for delivering so creatively the national anthem. We appreciate your talent. As an important advocate for youth, the National Youth Council has continued towards the greater good of the young people in Dominica. We thank you for your hard work and continued dedication to our betterment. We thank you, Mr. Blanford. 
Mr. Lander, my apologies. <laughs> what is you there? To the various media houses who assisted in the launching and continue to provide the platform for sh showcasing our efforts, we say thank you. We also express gratitude for streaming this program so other youth could in be informed about the strides in ag agriculture. We applaud your presence here today. To the many young people present, including representatives from the 4-H, junior achievers, schools, groups, and other organizations, thank you for being here. You are the future of this in the country. Thank you for your, willing, for your willingness to be part of the activity for the commitment to agriculture. This is for you. As a collective body of youth, we wish to direct our gratitude to the government of Dominica and its numerous functionaries for having us as a focal point here today. To everyone who in one way or another contributed to the successful media launch of the National Youth in Agriculture Program, we say thank you for your support. We are eternally grateful. We look forward to continue develop, let me take that again. We look forward to working together to continue develop our beautiful country. May God bless our leadership and every youth in agriculture. All Dominicans, God bless this beautiful island. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cameron Corbett. He's one of the leaders of the um, Southeast um, Young Farmers Movement that is happening in the Southeast. And he is the um, interim president and organizer of this group in the Southeast. Thank you very much for thanking us. And <laughs> to all of you, thank you. Finally, on behalf of the Honorable Ministers of Agriculture, and the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica, I wish you the best of the rest of the day, and thank you for being with us as we continue supporting youth in agriculture. Enjoy a little snack at the end, and let's have some interaction with the young people as we continue to enjoy the day. Thank you very much.